Hi, this is part three of a tutorial on Cakewalk, and um, what we're going to do is look at MIDI devices. So, uh, very first thing to start off, um, earlier I had recorded some audio, it was just gibberish, so if you wanted to delete something, you can highlight it, boom, it's gone. So now my headset mic is only used for talking a narrative and that. So one of the things uh, we, what I've done is I've copied and pasted all of uh, the tenor sax part over and over again. And uh, one of the things you might notice is that uh, we come to the very end here and we see that we've got a little bit of electric piano going on. Um, we've got our tenor sax here and a little bit later is our uh, drum kit. So how do you know if everything's ending at the same time? Well, what you can do is you can go to the track menu and you can select all tracks and it'll show you where all the tracks are ending. Right, so it looks pretty good here. Uh, this is showing that we, we are our last bar. Uh, we have our, our piano, uh, which is this guy. I can click on here. Now our piano is ending on uh, in bar 13. What we have is our sax is ending in bar 13, roughly, and then also our drums is ending in bar 13. So this is a way of uh, seeing where any device is, and we can easily switch between uh, tracks and that. If we wanted to just look at this track, like here's an example where uh, we have our sax is in purple, and if I highlighted, and this is a mistake you got to be careful of, if I highlight this uh, E, it highlights everything that's in E. So if I only wanted to change this on our sax, what would find out where it accidentally change our piano E also. So if I move this up, it, it's moving everything up. So we don't want to do that, so I'll just do a control Z and control Z and undo it. So that's something you have to be aware of. Um, so we've deleted our audio, we've got everything pretty well lined up. Uh, we want to make sure our cursor is at the beginning, it's at the beginning, and I'll just play what this uh, little tune is. When I hit the stop button, it goes back here. Okay, so let's get on to MIDI devices. So something with MIDI devices is uh, I have an M-Audio Oxygen 61 MIDI controller. It's a 61 key keyboard. The only thing it can do is it can play keys just like this is doing, right? Um, so uh, what the number one thing you have to be aware of buying a MIDI device is if it has, if you can get current device drivers. So current device driver would be uh, um, for Windows 10. So one of the things you have to be aware of is that like M-Audio, they, they follow the, uh, the MIDI standard. Uh, so Windows 10 automatically recognizes it. But if you get an older keyboard, like a Roland, I had a beautiful Roland keyboard, it was about 10 years old. Uh, there was no current drivers for Windows 10 to communicate with it through the USB port, right? So you have to be aware of that. You can get a great deal on a, a MIDI keyboard and then find out that you can't use it. Uh, if it has the old uh, uh, five pin DIN connectors, you can get USB to five pin DIN uh, adapters that you can plug in and then what will happen is uh, um, Windows 10 will recognize it. So you always have to be aware of that. Now what you do is you first hook up your keyboard to your computer then you open up Cakewalk and Cakewalk should recognize that your uh, MIDI device is connected. We can go to Edit, we can go to Preferences and under MIDI devices, you see my Oxygen 61. My Oxygen 61 is just an input device, so that's enabled. It's not an output device. I have, uh, there's no speakers, there's no way that this can play music, so it's not an output device. And then you'd say OK. So now it's connected up, so let's record something with it. So I'm going to open up the strings. Here's the uh, string section. Uh, string. Uh, input, you can either use none. The word none means all inputs. MIDI omni. Omni means all inputs. 
Uh, so whenever you see the word omni, that means any channel that your MIDI device puts out, this will recognize it. So you don't have to do the lot of the patching. Right? So I have it all set up here. This is with the strings. The strings are a bass. So the lower part of your keyboard is the bass. Uh, the upper part is the cello and the, the middle part's the cello, the, the high part's the violin. So you actually have three instruments that you can program here. Um, you have uh, all sorts of different flavors of them here that you can change the sounds of them. Uh, you also, with any of these uh, um, session instruments, is that they also have some pre-recorded uh, tunes here. And you can actually use these tunes in your uh, the song that you're writing. <laughs> So what we're going to do is record directly from the uh, keyboard. One of the things I want to do is check that my uh, cursor is at uh, um, bar, the first bar. So I've moved it down here. Uh, this is all in the key of C. So I'm just going to do some really simply, uh, some simple uh, C stuff. And we're going to enable it to record. So it's recording. Uh, enabled. Now I'm going to actual record. Start recording. All right, so I got some stuff recorded. Uh, when I hit stop, it goes back to the beginning. So now I can just play and hear what it sounds like. And you'll see, let's see, we'll click on the string section. Um, the only thing I want to see is the string. So what I'm going to do is clear all tracks. And it's recorded it for us. What's really nice is that I can take a look at the staff. So if I go view, staff view, it's written out the notes for us. So that's pretty cool. So now we've got a song recorded. How do we actually, uh, we might want to play with the council. This is really cool too. So one of the things is that normally you would put your uh, uh, drums in the center. And if we open up our, our drum window, what we can actually do is individual pieces. We can set it for left or right uh, pan, right? So I can turn it left or right. And that, so if we want to place instruments on a special uh, someplace left or right spatially, we can do that. We can also do that with, uh, so normally the drums are in the center and then we individual drums will put left or right. Uh, electric piano, we can put a little bit on the, uh, let's put it on the left side, our tenor sax, we can put it in the, uh, we'll put it in the middle and then we'll put our strings over on this side, turn down the strings a little bit uh, quieter. And now I'll just play. So then we can get a feel for what we want. When we're happy, then what we do is we export it. So I'm going to export it, audio, mp3. Uh, when, it, when we do mp3, it's going to ask us if we want to put in some information, right? And this is the information that you would see uh, when you look at music. It'll say who the artist is, the name of the song, um, what genre, and stuff like that.
All right, so one of the things we saw at the top, it said mixing down audio. We, we've saved it and we've recorded some music. So what we'll do is we'll stop there.